Friday the 13th had a TV show. Yeah, I'm not joking. The Friday the 13th TV show ran between 1987 and 1990 and was released by Paramount, the same studio who dealt with the Friday the 13th film franchise at that time. Yeah, your number one thing that you might be wondering is how the hell can we stretch out a plotless film into 26 episode seasons? Answer? They didn't. In fact, the films I even referenced once throughout all 72 episodes of the show. Not even once. That means no Jason, no Pamela, no Roy, even though it's probably for the best, no Tommy Jarvis, no Hockey Mask, no Machete Wielding Nutjob, and no Crystal Lake. But why name it Friday the 13th then? And what was the show actually about? Well, let's take a look into the Friday the 13th's weird TV show and prepare yourself for lots of spoilers. The show was created by Frank Marcisco Jr., most famous for producing every Friday sequel up to part 7, as well as April Fool's Day, which is a great pre-screen satire slasher film, which is on Netflix if you want to see it. I really like it, you should all probably check it out, it's really fucking good. But anyway, Frank came up with this concept for a TV show, along with Larry B. Williams, most famous for the horrifically death exploitative documentary, I say in quotation marks, Could It Be a Miracle? Anyway, who originally came up with the title The 13th Hour from the Friday the 13th show? A reference to the term the 13th stroke of the clock, aka something which is impossible. But Frank decided to change the name after figuring that viewing figures could be lower under the show's original title, and by changing it to Friday the 13th, they could draw in a much higher audience with the name and keep them with the original stories, which is, sounds a bit controversial and a little bit counterproductive, but Friday the 13th hasn't always been related to the franchise, and at this point it's only 10 years old. They could very easily have done it, so it's just focused on the unluckiness of things, which is what the show focuses on very clearly. Now, the series itself is very openly has zero ties to the film series, with Jason's mask not even making an appearance once, despite the production staff joking about putting the mask in the shop, they never actually appeared and was more likely just a joke. Instead, the show was created to stand completely on its own, bolstered by the title Friday the 13th. However, many people involved in the films did end up working in the show at several points, including John Shepard, who played Tommy Jarvis, Friday the 13th Part 5, composer Fred Mullen who worked on Friday 7 and Friday 8, as well as Rob Hedden who worked on Friday 8, and Tom McLaughlin who directed Friday the 13th Part 6. A few other like little cameos was the fact that legendary body horror director David Cronenberg also directed an episode and went on to appear in Jason X as a cameo, as well as Ryan's actor John DeLimay eventually portraying Stephen in Jason Goes to Hell. Coincidentally, the first visual Friday project not actually created by Paramount. So I can't even blame how terrible he was in casting that film on Paramount just liking him. He never worked for Paramount again after this show. As mentioned earlier, the show's title was meant to refer to the Friday the 13th date being bad luck related and bringing a lot of curses, something which the show's plot literally focuses around with the items in the antique shop. Early on, there were rumoured to be ties to the films, but Frank himself quickly cancelled these plans so the show could stand on his own, which, as he stated, did not take the audience away from the new world they were trying to create. Now, since its initial US release, however, certain areas have titled the series Friday's Curse to keep the show separate from the film franchise after watching just episode one, which you can find on YouTube. I really agree with the retitling of the show because this has 0% to do with Friday the 13th. Now, the show itself follows Mickey, Jack and Ryan, who is later replaced by Johnny, who must hunt down the cursed antiques sold by Mickey's crazy uncle, who made a deal with the devil to sell items in order to stay immortal. The show follows a very similar structure to a Monster of the Week format, with shows such as Doctor Who, Warehouse 13 and Buffy the Vampire Slayer following a very similar style, along with the shows also having recurring villains throughout. The main antagonist of the show is Mickey's Uncle Friday, <laughs> sorry, Uncle Lewis, who sometimes tried to stop Frank from taking the cursed items back. The show was also reportedly quite graphic for its time, showing some strong levels of gore and even some sexual scenes, and even nudity, marking the show being quite prolific for the time, as this was still during the video nasty scale when it comes to Britain. 
There's even a notable death of the show, with that being main character Mickey towards the start of the second season, however she is resurrected slightly short after, something which a lot of shows such as Warehouse 13, Doctor Who and Buffy Vampire Slayer do kind of follow with these fake out deaths very often. There was a very large change with the show's premise however, during its second season, where the character of Johnny is introduced towards the end of the season to help out the group and ends up completely replacing Ryan for the third season, leading to a brand new dynamic within the group. However, due to the show's sudden cancellation, there is no conclusion to the storyline, with Ryan still being stuck as a child and some cursed antiques still being out there. Honestly, even though I never got into the show, and in all honesty I only watched the first episode on YouTube for this video, it sucks that the show never reached its natural conclusion, and even worse about its sudden cancellation meant the third season was never even finished. Now, speaking of the cancellation, whilst the third season was in production, Paramount decided to cancel the show and inform the cast and crew their decision just after filming of a 20th episode had finished. Now, after doing some research of my own, I looked into when the show was cancelled and noticed that it was around about the same time that Friday the 13th Part 8 failed massively at the box office. This kind of led me to guess that the show was cancelled as to not advertise New Line Cinema's up and coming 1990s Freddy vs Jason film, which Paramount would have apparently had no involvement in. Either way though, the show was still quite successful, being nominated for multiple awards including the Emmys, the Gemini Awards and the Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy and Horror Film Awards. And the show was also partly successful overseas with many European countries such as Spain, Germany, Greece and Finland, with each area giving the show a different name such as Mystery for Free in Spain, Hairs to the Curse in Germany, The Mystery of Friday in Greece and Ghosts and Ghoulies in Finland because you know, book for Friday the 13th moniker, I guess. The show was eventually released on home media through DVDs by Paramount, with a complete series box set in the US, Australia and Europe, being released sometime in 2009. There was also one episode known as The Quilt of half Hour, being edited in some reasons to be a two hour TV movie instead of a two parter, something which led a lot of people to think that the series would became an anthology film franchise, but no, it's always just been a TV show with one we had two part of decided to edit together. And sadly, despite how much I want to find more, that's sadly where the story of the show ends. One of the most graphic shows of the 1980s ends in the 90s with no real conclusion. No discussions of bringing back the show or anything, it was just over and I guess so is this video. If you want to watch the show, you can still get the box sets through eBay and even Amazon in some areas, with many episodes finding their way onto YouTube if that interests you at all, but with that out of the way, I guess thanks for watching. It's a shame that the show was just kind of cut, and I always find that kind of stuff really upsetting for the creators of the programme, but at the same time, at least the show was still able to keep its legacy and was able to stand its own ground without the movies. So if you do enjoy this kind of content and you've been enjoying Friday Month, please be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to watch other Friday the 13th videos, I should now have a playlist. I probably had one last week or the week before. I'm just going to point it out a little bit clearer now. But yeah, if you enjoy this stuff, next week we're going to be doing all the other Friday the 13th video games and that will end Friday month. Next month is going to be Alien Month as well as a one-off standalone part for the Unmade series because it is my birthday next month. So until then, I thank you all for watching and I hope you have an amazing week, so I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.